All right, we are live. So let's go into the comment section. So in this video, we are going to talk about several psychological tools that you can use to get more clients. Uh, so if you can hear me, if you're out there, I want you to type yes in the chat so I can make sure that you guys can hear me all right. Um, also, I think that in StreamYard, or we're using StreamYard to go live, so I believe that there's actually a button that you need to click that when you click, uh, when you actually click that, it will allow us to see your name. So I see Andrew Ayers. What's up, Andrew? How's it going? I like your name. I really appreciate your name, Andrew. It's a good, solid name. Uh, but if you click on uh, the, the link in the chat, what's up, Chase? Uh, it will tell you, it'll, it'll allow you to make it so that I can actually see your name in your picture because I'm using uh, StreamYard. So what we're going to talk about today is four psychological tools that you can use to get more clients. And this applies to a law firm, this applies really to any business, anytime you're selling anything to any anyone, these are psychological tools that you can apply. Now, I will warn you, these tools can be used for good or for evil. So please, please, please use them for good. And before we get started, Andrew was wondering what Yeti I've got today. I've got the bright yellow Yeti cup because I forget my, uh, I forget where I put my cup all the time. And this way I can, I can, I can see it all the time. What's up, Dave Buckley? How's it going? So, um, welcome to the group, Dave. I can't believe you weren't in this group before. So, all right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about psychological tools that you can use to get more clients. All right. So let's get started. A psychological tool that you can use to get more clients that most people underrate is building rapport. Rapport is one of those things that it's so easy to build if you just focus on it. And when we have rapport with people, those are typically the types of people that we want to do business with. So what are some ways that you can build rapport? Well, one of the ways that I built rapport for a long time without even realizing that I was building rapport is for a long time behind me, I had a framed signed Lionel Messi jersey. Now, for those of you who don't know, Lionel Messi is a soccer player. He's probably the greatest soccer player that ever lived, unless you're a Cristiano Ronaldo fan, which I am not. But I think that Messi was the greatest soccer. Is He still played, but I think he's the best player in the world. So it's funny because I had this jersey behind me, and I didn't even plan for this to happen. But what I would get over and over and over again is comments about my Messi jersey and, and people talking to me about soccer because they know that I'm obviously a soccer fan. So what happened was a lot of soccer fans became very, very – uh, a lot of lawyers who were soccer fans became very, very, um, you know, they, they, they were interested in me because they felt that rapport with me. Right. So that's really, really cool. So I tell lawyers all the time, lawyers like, should I wear a suit? Should I wear a jacket? Should I wear a button down shirt in my videos or, or what should I do? And I was telling them, to be honest with you, a lot of times you would be better. Let's say you're from Boston. You would be better if you're talking about stuff that regular people care about. You would be better wearing like a Patriots hat, or like a Patriots jersey or like a Red Sox shirt or like a Bruin shirt or something like that, because that builds rapport, right? Now, it doesn't have to just be about sports. If you're not into sports or you don't have sports town, that's fine. There's lots of things that you can do to build rapport with people that you can put uh, sub, 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 subtly in your video. So for example, we have a client, his name is Patrick Slaughter. Patrick Slaughter is really, really into Disney. He loves going to Disney. He and his wife, live in Florida. They go to theme parks all the time. So he had an Aladdin poster right behind him, like right here. And people would always, always, always comment on his Aladdin poster. They would comment on that and they'd say, oh, my favorite Disney, Disney movie is this and all that type of stuff. And then he, he, he actually didn't realize this was happening until one day he moved the Aladdin poster and switched it to another Disney poster. And people were comp like that's what people were commenting on in his videos is that, hey, where'd your Aladdin poster go? I like that post, you know, like people were commenting on stuff. So the way that he built rapport with people was through Disney, through his Disney characters, right? Another thing that has happened to me all the time is I've had, I have a, I have a dog, she's like a hundred pounds, she's insane. And a lot of times when I'll film videos, she'll be barking in the background or sometimes she'll just go walking through the back of my background, right? Well, what's funny is that some of the videos that have gotten the most comments have not been about the content of the video. It's been, what kind of dog do you have? Oh, I have this kind of dog. And, and, and there's rapport building that way, right? So 
what you should do is you should figure out what are things that you can do? What are things that you're interested in that you can put around your office, that you can strategically place behind your Zoom backgrounds that will help you build rapport? Because when that happens, people feel closer to you. And then when they feel closer to you, they begin to know you, they begin to like you, and they begin to trust you. And we know that we hire people that we know, we like, and we trust. Here's a couple of other ideas. Uh, sports. Sports are a huge, a huge thing that brings people together. Military is a big thing that brings people together. If you were in the military, you know, use that fact to your advantage. Put something behind you that indicates that you were in the military because anyone else that was in the military or has a parent that was in the military or a spouse that is in the military is automatically going to feel closer to you and they're going to feel like they have more in common with you because of that military rapport that you're building. You can do this around cars. So if you're really into old cars and things like that, you know, like, there's a lot of stuff you can do this with. But just think about what are you interested in? What can you put around your office or strategically place behind your background? Or what can you wear that will that will make you build rapport with the people that are watching your videos, that you're doing consultations with over Zoom, that you're meeting with in your office? What can we do? You always hear that people say, oh, this is a conversation piece. Well, it's, it's funny because it sounds kind of cheesy, but like really that's kind of what you're trying to do. You're trying to strategically put stuff uh, in in your office that's going to start conversations that's going to immediately make you build rapport with people so that is rapport if you use rapport uh you will get more people to hire you just because of the fact that they're gonna like you because they feel closer to you so all right what's up kevin uh afternoon from lakeland florida all right so um all right so that is the first one now the second the second psychological tip <clears throat> excuse me grab a drink real quick <clears throat> By the way, if you guys are getting value out of this, type value in the chat. I want to see if you guys, if that was, was that rapport thing helpful? Did that give you guys something to think about, something you can put on your, uh, on your, your, your backgrounds? All right. So <clears throat> awesome. Andrew got some value out of it. All right. Now let's talk about number two, number two. All right. So reciprocity is something that is ingrained in all of us and we can use it to make more sales. However, we very, very rarely do that. So let me give you an example. If you give someone a small gift, then they are going to feel obligated to give you something back in return. It's, in, it's, it's ingrained in all of us. It's a human nature thing. If I invite you to my party, then you feel like you need to invite me to your party. It's, it's reciprocity. So the way that we can do this is that we can use this human nature to our advantage when we're trying to get people to hire us. So for example, if you have a consultation set up with somebody, if it's an in-person consultation, then you can give them some sort of small gift when they get to your office. You can give them uh, you know, a book or you can give them you know, something, I don't even know what it is, but something small, some sort of small item that you can give them will trigger that reciprocity. And when they have reciprocity, then they're going to feel more like hiring you because almost like because they kind of feel like they almost owe it to you right so um what you can do uh, another way you can do this when people are in your office offer drinks offer snacks um especially uh drinks that have caffeine so like coffee and soda because caffeine makes people much more likely to impulse buy right so that they're much more likely to purchase from you if they've been drinking caffeine as well but reciprocity is huge now if you're not able to uh, have somebody come in your office, let's say you're doing Zoom consultations, things like that. Um, if you have the consultation that day, this is a little hard to do, but if they, if you don't, if you have it like a couple days later, then send them some sort of like, like book or like free guide or something like that. Like you can put a pocket guide together that maybe is like your best tips to avoid some sort of problem that they're facing and actually put it in the mail, overnight it to them if you have to, but you want to make sure that they have something from you, that they've actually received some sort of gift, some sort of free gift from you. A lot of attorneys do this. They call it a shock and awe package or things like that, where they'll give you all kinds of stuff. They'll give you a keychain and a hat and a pen and like all kinds of stuff. It really doesn't matter what it is. Just give something and that will automatically trigger reciprocity, right? If somebody gives you a birthday gift, and then you don't give them a birthday gift on your on their birthday like you kind of feel like a jerk right give, give me a one in the chat if you know what uh what, what i'm talking about if, if somebody gives you something and then you don't re and then you don't return the favor 
it, it, it feels weird, right? So reciprocity, reciprocity is something that you can use. It's a psychological tool that you can use to get more clients to hire you. So I would definitely use that in your things. And actually, here's another really good tip. If you have a, like, if you have like some, some, make a short, a short book, you don't have to write a whole book, right? But you can create like a short pamphlet or something like that. And let me show you what I did. Hold on. So in five star attorney, this is my book, five star attorney at the beginning of the book, this is, so I, I give this book to a lot of people, right? If you don't have this book, go to free book, go to uh, 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 what is it? Uh, get law from get, get five star reviews.com. I think it is something like that. Just Google five star attorney on Amazon. You'll find it. Um, but what I did is the very, very beginning here. I have a section. It says what people are saying. And it's basically like 10 pages of testimonials, right? So what happens is I give people this free book and immediately, so first of all, they got reciprocity and then I also embedded testimonials in there. So that's social proof. That's another, that's a, that's a bonus psychological tool I wasn't even thinking about. Um, so reciprocity, use uh, rapport and reciprocity and you will make a lot more money. All right, so now the third psychological tool that you can use to get more clients and make more money and grow your law firm and live the life of your dreams is called price anchoring. Now, price anchoring is uh, price anchoring is basically where it's the 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 the, the theory. It's not really a theory because I, I see this happen all the time. It's basically you say a high number, which makes a lower number seem not as high, right? So I've had this all the time. I've bought. You know, I've, I've looked at I've looked at cars before. Actually, what was I looking at? The other day? I was looking at something the other day. Oh, I was looking at watches for some reason. I was looking at these crazy watches, uh, these Patek Philippe watches. And what's funny is I was looking at the watch. I wasn't actually going to buy one, but there was a watch. It was five hundred ninety five thousand dollars. Right. Type five hundred ninety five thousand in the chat. If you think five hundred ninety five thousand dollars is crazy for a watch. Well, anyway, I was looking at this watch and it was five hundred ninety five thousand dollars so then i was on this website it's chrono.com and i was clicking around and then i saw this other watch that was seventy seven thousand dollars and i was looking at this other watch it was also a tech and i was looking at it, it was seventy seven thousand i was like oh that's not too bad and then like i had to like smack myself i was like seventy seven thousand dollars that's not too bad what the hell are you talking about that's insane right and it, but what's funny is that because I was just looking at a watch that was $595,000, $77,000 now seemed reasonable. Now, obviously, you're not going to be charging $595,000 for your services, although that might be what some of your settlements are worth, probably more than worth. But you can use this to pre you can use this same strategy. This is like when you go to the movie theater and they have a large thing of popcorn uh, for, you know, $7 and 50 cents. And then the mediums, like, you know, it, it's like they're playing with numbers, but they're doing a little bit opposite of what I'm going to tell you to do. So what you can do when you, and, 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 and I love doing this, this works really, really well. What you can do is at the beginning of your presentation. Now this is really for fee based attorneys, not really retainer based attorneys, retainer based attorneys. I got more stuff for you coming up. So don't tune out yet. Right. But, um, fee based attorneys, which you can do. And I used to do this all the time at the beginning, I would, basically mention a really high price that I would charge. So I would start a conversation by saying, okay, cool. Well, let's hop on the phone here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you why our services are worth $25,000. Um, and then I'm just going to ask some questions. And, and basically what I would do is I would drop that $25,000 number. And by doing that, now they're thinking $25,000, $25,000, $25,000, $25,000. $25, I go through the entire presentation. And then once I got to the presentation, what I would do is I would say, now, listen, I know that you, I know that we said it was $25,000 before, but um, we're actually going to, it's actually, I don't think your case or I don't think your, your marketing campaign is going to be as complicated as some of these other ones that we've charged $25,000 for. So for you, it's only going to be $14,000. And then what happens is now they're already thinking 25,000 and the entire time they're thinking, is this worth 25? How do I get 25? Uh, you know, how can I justify 25? And then all of a sudden, it's no longer 25, it's 14. Now 14 feels like a lot less, right? But here's what's really cool. You could actually have 14 be your premium value offer. So what I mean by that is let's say your retainer is $5,000. So let's say you're a family law attorney and you charge $5,000 for your standard retainer. What I want you to do is I want you to come up with a premium value offer that's maybe $10,000 or $15,000 or something like that. 
And then I want you to think, okay, if I actually did charge $15,000, how would I serve my clients differently? What would I be able to offer them differently that would justify a $15,000 price tag? So what you can do is you can make that offer initially. You can say, well, it's $15,000 and we do this, 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 right? Now here's what's cool. A certain percentage of people will buy that $15,000 offer. So right there, you just made three times as much money. But when they say, oh, that's too much money, that's more than I was, expect I was expecting, then you can say, okay, well, you know, we do have our little package for $5,000 if you wanted to go that route. And then what happens is now they've heard 25, they've heard 15, and now five. And five seems like a, like a, a great deal, right? You could even make that five, 5,500 or 6,000. Like if you normally charge five, you could raise it 500 or a thousand bucks. And it still seems like a great deal just because of that price anchor, right? So the psychology is, is that if you name a big number and then you start coming down, even if that number down here wasn't that it's high, it's going to seem much less than because you started higher. Now, if you just went and just went through the entire thing and said, okay, well, it's $5,000. That might sting a little bit because $5,000 is a lot of money, but because you've already made it, uh, you've already named a high price and then you came down again and you came down again, it makes it a lot easier to swallow and it makes it so that much so that people feel much better about the $5,000 price tag. So uh, uh, price anchoring is a huge thing that you guys should be using and it works really, really well. So uh, you guys, you guys getting a lot out of this. Let me know in the chat if you guys are getting a lot out of this right now, um, because uh, I, I, I like these formats here, but it's weird because I don't get the, the instant feedback that I get from uh, from Zoom. It's pretty interesting. Uh, it's a different format we're using here. All right, so here's a next. Here's the next thing uh, that you guys that you guys can do. All right, so most people don't realize that. So so how, how do I explain this? Okay, so um, there's a concept in there's a, there's a concept that whoever can best describe the problem is thought to have the best solution. So what that means is that when you are talking to a prospect, when you are in a sales, uh, a sales mode or a consultation mode or something like that, what you want to do is you want to go above and beyond describing the problem that they are actually having and not just saying, well, yeah, you're probably just tired of of not being appreciated. Like, let's say your family law attorney, instead of saying, well, you're probably just not, you're probably just tired of not being appreciated. You would say, let me guess, you come home from work, you're tired, uh, your husband's sitting on the couch, the kids are screaming, and somebody's gotta make dinner, and then the couch, the house is a mess, so you, you, you cook dinner all night, and you clean, and then by the time it's all over, you're so tired, you just wanna lay down. And, and then you wake up, and you go to sleep, and you wake up, and you're doing the exact same thing the next day, and it feels like it never ends, is that right? If you do that and you actually describe like a situation, like like kind of can kind of like nail their situation and you can use it with broad strokes and, and, and be kind of vague about it. But if you do that, then people will think that you understand their problem much better. And the person who can articulate the problem the best is automatically always thought to have the best solution. So what I would do is I would work on when you're talking to clients, when you're kind of trying to figure out what's happening with them what's actually when you're trying to figure out like what's the what's the situation they're going through use very descriptive words when you're trying to guess what's happening with them when you're trying to describe it because if you can describe their situation then they will think that you have the best solution and that works really 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 well so that was my fourth tip is accurately and vividly describe the problem because if, if if you can describe the problem the best then you're automatically thought to have the best solution now that was for i've got uh two bonus sessions or two bonus tips that i'm going to give you uh if you guys want to type one in the chat if you guys want these two bonus tips and let me know so far what has been uh your favorite tip has it been rapport has it been reciprocity has it been price anchoring or has it been describing the problem? Let me know what you guys think. All right, somebody said, great stuff, Andy. I like that one. I don't know who said that though. It just says Facebook user. <laughs> All right, so Andrew's favorite was rapport. What else? So everybody else, what was your what was your favorite of the ones I've done? I got rapport, reciprocity, price anchoring, and accurately. Okay, so describing the problem. Cool. Awesome. All right. All right. So now I got a really good one that um i got a really good one that uh is a bonus here i wasn't i wasn't i was trying to figure out should i include this or not and i figured i'll just throw it in as a bonus 
All right, so this involves the word but. The word but, and I'm not talking about your rear end. I'm talking about, is it a conjunction? I don't know what it is. I, I wasn't really good in English. But um, the word but. So when you use the word but, all of the emotional emphasis goes to whatever is at the back of the, whatever follows the word but. So let me give you an example. If I say you can make a lot of money if you grow your law firm, but you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to do things that you're not comfortable with. You're going to have to invest your own money. You're going to have to work long hours and it's going to be really scary. Right. Versus if I said, listen, you're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to invest your own money. It's going to be scary. But the result is that you are going to have a law firm that allows you to live the lifestyle that you want. Now, if I would have said that in reverse, as the, if you can imagine the first one, what people focus on is they focus on it's going to be hard. There's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be scary. I'm going to have to invest. It's going to be I'm going to have to you know work long hours, all that type of stuff. That's why you always want to put the bad news first. Right. So if you're talking to a client, you can say, listen, you know, look, I'm not going to lie. This is not going to be easy. You're probably going to have to do depositions. We're probably going to have to go to court. This might take six months. It might take a year. Um, it's probably going to be very emotional. But at the end, you are going to be able to move on with your life. You're going to be able to start over. You're going to be able to find your soulmate. You're going to be able to do this. You're going to, be able to do that. And ultimately, you are going to be happier. Right. So if you can just shift where you put the, the negative and the positive around the word, but because our our, our our inclination is never to lead with the bad. We always want to lead with the good. But what we're actually doing is we're actually hurting ourselves, because if you lead with the bad and then say, but and then show the good, then their emotional emphasis is going to focus on the thing that came after the word. But right. So that is a bonus the word but and then I have one more for you before we wrap up this session. Um, all right, so my final tip. A lot of times people create content and they're teaching people how to go toward pleasure or they're trying to lead someone toward pleasure. So a lot of times maybe you'll be in a sales consultation or you'll be creating content or you'll be doing something and your message will be I'm going to help you go to here and go to here means get the thing that you want, which is basically leading them toward pleasure. Right now, what you really should be doing instead is focusing on getting them away from pain because people trust strangers to allow them to get out of pain, to allow them to get away from pain. But they don't trust people. They don't trust strangers to allow them to move toward pleasure. So my coach, Myron Golden, used to tell this story where imagine you're walking in, in downtown Tampa and somebody's just handing out hundred dollar bills, just handing out three hundred dollar bills, hundred dollar bills. Right. You'd be a little skeptical because I, I'm thirty nine years old. I've never seen anyone just passing out three hundred dollar bills before. Now, imagine you're walking in downtown Tampa and you trip and you hit your head on the curb and you're bleeding and you're you're dizzy and you're, you're maybe disoriented and a stranger comes over and they wrap a towel around your head and they say give me your phone let me call somebody for you they help you up your feet to help you sit down and and you give them their phone you give them the phone they make a phone call for you we trust people that we don't know to help us get out of pain but not to lead us toward pleasure so your messaging should always be think about always think about this am i leading them toward pleasure or am I leading them away from pain, right? And if you shift that messaging during your content that you create, during your sales consultations, all that stuff, you are going to be much more likely to get more clients because people trust other people that they don't know to lead them away from pain, but not toward pleasure. So hopefully that tip helped as well. Um, <laughs> you're right. But is a conjunction. <laughs> Con conjunction. All right, cool. Well, I guess I paid attention to something in high school. I don't know if that's high school or elementary school or what that is. So anyway, but anyway, so those are my uh, four plus two bonus psychological tools that you can use to get more clients. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I'm going to do a, uh, another one next week. I don't know what the topic's going to be yet, but it's going to be really cool. 
Uh, do you guys have any questions before I wrap up? Let me know in the chat real quick uh, if you have any questions. Uh, happy to answer some questions before we go here about any of the stuff that I covered. Awesome. Somebody said, love the new set, Andy. You know, it's actually, this is actually not the, not a new set. This is actually my main office. I have, um, I have, this is like, this is my main computer. The reason that I'm here and not in my office, which the, the, the thing with the board is actually behind this wall, um, is that we have an infrared sauna in there as well. My wife was in the sauna, so I'm doing my video from out here today. But uh, yeah, I, I, I set this up intentionally. I actually have multiple brick walls. Um, and uh, I have places that I can film video everywhere. And that's actually a good lesson is that what I did is I basically turned all of my living spaces into places that I could just film videos. And if you see uh, my desk, I've got cameras and microphones permanently mounted and I've got lights up there so that I just hit a button and I'm ready to go and then I'm on to the next thing. So I don't see any comments here. So we are going to, uh, okay, cool. Andrew said, I got a client from a Mandalorian poster in the background of my videos. Perfect. Exactly. So that's something really good. Star Wars. People love Star Wars. I, in fact, hate Star Wars, but some people love Star Wars. And hey, more power to you. Use that stuff. Use that for you. And uh, it'll work really well. And I think we have some starred stuff in here. Uh, I'd like to see a whole session on creating sets for videos. That would actually be pretty cool. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm not great at that, though. I'd have to find I'd have to find somebody that can do that because I feel like my sets don't look that great. Uh, maybe maybe it's just the type of thing where we never like our own stuff, you know. But I, I look at my video and I see all this stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I wish that. Like like so, for example, it's driving me crazy right now that you can't see that light, and I have another light that. Hang on, how can I show this? I have another light right there that you can't see, and it's driving me crazy that you can't see those. But you know, what are you gonna do? So anyway. Uh, question: Any insider tips for obtaining an Instagram handle that is inactive? in demand uh messaging to uh, besides messaging the owner which goes no response and can't determine identity um to be totally honest with you i really don't know how to do that um i think that it's uh it might be a situation of contacting instagram however i believe that the only way that they'll give up an instagram um Okay, yeah, Alex said you can contact Instagram, but I was going to say the only thing, I think the only, the only time that they would actually do anything is if it's a trademark or a copyright issue. So if, you know, for example, if your name is Coca Cola, <laughs> you know, your company's Coca Cola, they're probably going to, uh, they're probably going to take that more seriously than is if it's just some random name. Jane, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, you enjoyed the, uh, the content here. Um, cool. Do we have any, uh, Rachel, do we have any other questions? If you want to throw it up in the chat, uh, the, uh, the, uh, comment, the, yeah, the screen. Awesome. Thank you, Jane. I appreciate it. All right, cool. All right. Well, let's, uh, oh wait, we got more. <clears throat> All right. Is there a good way to share long form videos to Google my business or whatever it's called now? It's actually Google business profile. Uh, I usually just end up linking to YouTube, but would love to be able to embed them directly into the profile. I don't believe that there is. I think the only way you can do it is to link to YouTube. That at least is the, the way that you used to be able to do it. I have not like double and triple checked that they haven't changed that. But for a very long time, I don't believe you were able to do it. And I still don't believe that you're able to put videos on a Google business profile, unfortunately. Um, you can share them as a post and you can do links to them and things like that. But I don't think you can actually embed them on the profile, which doesn't make sense because Google uh, owns YouTube. So you'd think that they would incorporate those two. But for some reason, that's beyond me. They didn't. So uh, Glenn said, can't the files be compressed? I don't know what, what files we're talking about. Are you talking about the video files? Not, not entirely sure. Um, okay, cool. So if you guys enjoyed this. Uh, and actually, it was just up on the screen here. We have a really, really cool seminar. Not a seminar. It's a, it's a three-day boot camp that we're doing, that I'm doing, Bill Hauser's doing. We've got some amazing speakers um, who uh, I cannot wait to announce. Uh, I can't tell you who we have. In the past, we've had Magic Johnson. We've had Alex Rodriguez. We've had, uh, we've had uh, uh, who, who else do we have? Um, uh, Jillian Michaels. We had uh, Kevin O'Leary, Damon John. Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street, what's his name, Jordan Belfort. Like, we've had some really big names on these things. Plus, we've had some huge lawyers. We had Glenn Lerner. We had 
uh, Mike Morris, we've had Daryl Isaacs, we've had all these big attorneys. So we've got some really, really, really cool attorneys that are coming up uh, and some some really cool A-list people that are going to be on this event in December. It's December 14th, 15th, and 16th, and it's going to teach you how to prepare for 2023. It's called the New Me 2023 uh, Boot Camp. And the goal is that you are going to put a plan together for 2023 that you're actually going to stick to. Right. We're not talking about a New Year's resolution because New Year's resolutions don't work. Uh, this, I think January 17th is is officially New Year's resolution quit day. Right. That's the day that 95 percent of people have have blown their New Year's resolution. So we're not talking about New Year's resolutions here. We're talking about how to actually put a plan together for your law firm so that you can make 2023 the best year ever. And tickets you can get in for as little as one dollar right now. Um, but once we start announcing speakers, once we get closer to the event, it's going to go way up. So make sure to grab your tickets. Uh, the link is probably in the chat somewhere and uh, or you can go to new me 2023 bootcamp.com. So anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. It's a lot of fun. I will see you guys back here next week. Talk to you guys later.